Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, Nana again. Today we're going to be doing the uh, second experiment, summing and subtracting amplifiers. So I'm going to start with uh, inverter, inverting, uh, summing amplifiers. So you guys know the drill. Uh, file, new project, and enter the name. Some uh, amplifier. Click on OK and create a blank project and click on OK. So the components are almost the same. We just need the more, more we just need more number of components compared to the previous one. So the basic one which is there in the previous experiment and now is LM741. So let's start with that. Hit on P. Type LM741. And let's place it somewhere over here. Uh, okay, for uh, the summing amplifier, uh, for an inverter, we are supposed to convert it to the second terminal. So let's start placing V signs over there. Hit on P again and type V sign. So let's take three sources. One over here. The other one over here. Other one. Okay. And in this, you guys can see um, this is a negative terminal. So let's start connecting it to the negative terminal. Um, well, uh, before that, let's place some components. Uh, VDCs. One over here. And the other one over here. Okay, and um, well, we need some resistors. So P and R, R analog. Let's place them close to the sinusoidal, each adjacent to the other one. Okay, and um, one more resistor is needed. Um, the RF. Let's place the RF somewhere here. Okay. Um, so as you guys can see, its circuit is almost like this. So we just need to connect it. Hit on W and connect. Start connecting it to the resistors. Connect this to the second terminal. And let's create a node over here. Okay, and R4 is connected to 2. Oops, yeah. Uh, let's move this DC so that it doesn't, you know, mix with the other wire and, you know, cause some problems in our uh, simulation. Okay, wire again terminal 6 and the DC source is connected here this one is connected okay uh, now let's place the grounds hit G for ground and start placing one here the one here and another one here three grounds in total and let's connect them to this terminal here, this one here, and uh, V1, V2, and V3 are connected here, and here, to this ground, and the third terminal is connected to the ground directly. Now let's place the voltage probes over here, here and here, and at the output. Okay, now to set the values, um, let's make sure that all the resistors are at 1K, because that would pretty much make it very easy for us to calculate. And um, all the V-offs are zero in all the three cases. 
let's set V amplitude to um, 4, 4 volt. And uh, V off again here is 0. And this one would be 3 volt, 0, and 2 volt. And as for the frequencies, let's set everything to 50, 50 hertz. Um, yeah, done. Well, this is the circuit. Uh, let's enter the DC values in V4. It's 15 volt. And at V5 also is 15 volt. Sorry, my bad. Um, so, circuit is done. We just need to simulate it now. Let's go to PSPICE and uh, new simulation profile. And and uh, well, as your faculties have suggested, uh, enter your initials followed by registration number. Click on create. Uh, my simulation profile already exists, so we need to create a new one. But I'll show you what the simulation exactly is. Uh, it's in time domain, and uh, the run to time is uh, 100 amp because your frequency is around 50 hertz. So to get a proper reading, uh, we set it at uh, 100 milliseconds. And um, well, everything is ready. Let's just run it now. Okay. Um, yeah. So here's the graph. If you notice the graph, it's the output has been inverted as we have expected, and we have done the first experiment itself. Okay. Let's place the uh, toggle cursor somewhere over here. And if you notice the values in the bottom corner. These values, um, when you add V2, I mean, all this green signal, the red one and the blue one, you will get uh, the negative of your output. So that's what we are supposed to verify with this experiment. So you can take down the readings and, uh, well, if you guys have any doubt on how to plot it, I'll show you here. Um, so right now, the green signal is selected. So you'll see this box as marked label click that and this point has been marked so you can if you want to mark the red one click on the red uh, small what do you say a diamond shape thing shape over here and you might have a different shape uh, so mark label again and hit on the blue one mark label for the yellow hit on the yellow signal and yeah, so if you add 3.80 plus 2.85 plus 1.90, it will be equal to the negative of the output. That's minus of minus 8.5. And, uh, well, that's the inverting case. So we can close this. I'm going to move on with non-inverting. Um, you guys can have a look at the graph. I mean, sorry, at the um, circuit. So for non-inverting, we don't have to do much of a change in this. We just have to select this and control X and remove the ground here. Control V again. Connect it. Oops. Just make sure you don't get any exclamatory mark. If you're getting it, just move it a little bit to the, towards the side so that you don't get anything. Uh, there's a small gap over here. Let, let me just connect it. And as, as far as this uh, second terminal is concerned, uh, we may have to place a resistor and a ground. Um, so let's place a part again. Our analog. Keep it over here. And a ground. G. Okay. Ground is also placed. Um, now to wire this up again. Make sure you don't get any exclamatory mark. If you're getting it, just remove the wiring and reconnect it. And connect it to the ground. And change the R4 value to 2K. Uh, this is so that we get better readings. And uh, the values of all the... Uh, V signs to 
this one volt, two volt, and three volt respectively. Okay, and three volt. Okay, um, it's done. Um, so we can just simulate it. Oh, sorry. Or uh, you place the voltage probes before that at each and every point. Yes. Now we run it. Uh, yeah. Okay, so if you notice the signal, well, all of them are in phase, obviously, and uh, as we had expected, it's an inverting signal, I mean, non inverting signal, so all are in phase. And if you add these values of the blue signal, the red one, and the green one, you will get it equal to the output signal. So yeah, you can you guys can take the values again and uh, you know verify that. So th th there isn't much in this. It's similar to the previous one. Um, and yeah, as I explained earlier, you can just mark the label and select every value. Okay, close this and um, moving on to the subtractor. Um, we don't need all of this. We just need two sinusoidal sources at the terminals two and three respectively so let's place them v sign yep um one here the other one here okay uh um yeah we connect oh we place a resistor before that uh Let's place the resistors. R analog one here. The other one here. Well, I feel I might have some problems in connecting. So let me just move them towards the left. So as we move, to, move them towards the left, um, let's start wiring them up. Now we have to place another resistor over here. Okay. And uh, change R force value to 1K again because we won't have, uh, we'll get proper readings then. Okay. Um, so let's connect V7 to R6. And this goes here. Um, some people don't forget to connect it, so just make sure you connect this. R7. Do not forget about this. This is the reason why the subtractor works. And uh, we need a we need a ground now. Let's place the ground here. Anywhere would do actually. Another wire. And to the ground. Okay. Um. So we set V off again, zero, and let's set the second terminal's V amplitude as two volt, and the frequency as fifty hertz as usual, and V off for the third one is zero. And amplitude is four volt. Frequency is fifty hertz. Okay. Um. So let's. Oh, um, place the voltage probes again. Keep forgetting about it. over here and here. Okay, um, now let's simulate it. As we simulate it, uh, you can, you would clearly notice. One sec. Uh, before I show that, well, the yellow one is the output, green is the input, and red is the input. 
so the red is 4 volt and the green one if you notice clearly uh, it's the green signal is equal to the yellow signal over here because the 4 volt input which you're giving at the third terminal um, is subtracted by the 2 volt which has been given at the second terminal so you're getting a result uh, resultant uh, V out of 2 volt or you can if you have any doubts you can just set this 4 volt to 5 volt then you'll be getting your output at 3 volt so you set it at 5 volt and run it okay ah uh, yeah now this is more clear uh, you guys can place your toggle cursor somewhere over here So we can clearly take the readings over here, 2.88 uh, is equal to 4.81 minus 1.92 approximately. Well, we cannot really get the actual values because when we are calculating, we calculate it for an ideal op-amp. So it's not ideal, so there will be some fluctuations in the values that we are getting. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, that's the subtractor op-amp and it's the circuit diagram. So. Well, stay tuned for the next experiment. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.